the nonprofit that I'm the founder and director of is the I Love This Life Foundation. I travel across the country and speak to kids about mental health and self-esteem. We have a couple of programs that that is done through. We have a school assembly program called the Imagine Believe Achieve School Assembly. I've authored now two 52-week interactive journals uh, for kids to truly start seeing the positives in their day. And I also do a summer camp. The mission at I Love This Life is that we want to give every child the hope to dream big and that through every single one of these assemblies that I share, we hope that they go out and start to write their own stories. Two weeks ago now, you know, I was just doing a school in Nampa and the night before I had gotten a text message from a kid who had previously heard me speak and it was a text message of her saying that my message saved her life. You know, that's something for me that I had never gotten a message like that before, that was the first one, but I tell it to kids as well as that it's a, it's a whole lot different from when you hope that you save a life or you hope you change just one kid to know that you've actually saved someone's life. You know, I, I love to speak to every age. I think we really just took adaption to that middle school and high school range because they can truly hear the full message. You know, we don't want a kid in elementary school going home to their parents and saying, hey, we learned about teen suicide today. We don't want that to happen. But so that middle school, high school range has truly been able to take on this message in full. That's why I love to speak to them so much. The main piece that I always give them is find something that allows them to release what's going on. You know, a lot of the tips that I give are through journaling. That's something that I did for a lot of my life. Um, also music. Music is a huge thing for me. Actually, I Love This Life is a song title by a band named Low Cash. So music has always been a huge part of my life. That's what I always tell kids is to let music be something that can inspire you and lift you up to make something great out of it. Um, also just to, to trust any friends that you have. You know, rely on your parents, rely on your teachers, rely on your any friend that you have. You know, they're, they're there for you. I'm, I've been thankful to have a really good friend group down here who has seen what I've done with, with the nonprofit and they're there to support me. But I know there are kids out there who, even if they don't have a friend group, find somebody to rely on. You know, because just having that one person there can truly make a whole difference. Especially, I give an example to kids with me coming into a new school right in the middle of the pandemic. I didn't really have anyone to turn to. I really didn't know where to go. But being able to find even just one person truly changed you know, my path going into, into this new school and through obviously to now. The biggest thing was 2020. You know, for a, lot, for a lot of kids like me, especially for me who moving into a new school right in the middle of the pandemic, it was hard. Um, really not able to do anything except go outside, right? We couldn't see our friends. We couldn't do a lot of the things that we love to do. That was truly a really big kicker for a lot of kids. Um, and I know a lot of kids truly struggle with family life at home. That's another big thing that a lot of kids struggle with. You know, I struggled with it myself. I'm lucky to say I struggled with it early on, so I truly didn't know what was going on. Um, but there are kids now who struggle the same age as me that truly think that they're the reason that all that is happening. And it's, it's always something that I say in my assemblies is that it's not an if you're gonna struggle, it's when. A lot of the thing was just my dad being there for me. You know, that was truly the biggest piece for me to know, like this is somebody that I can turn to no matter what. Um, but also just my dad takes interest in a lot of the stuff I do. He was always there for me no matter what, no matter what happened. And truly for him, he just starts a conversation. That's always the biggest thing for me is that I know I'm not scared to talk to him, but that's what he also tells a lot of parents is, is just start a conversation with them. You know, let that run down the line and if it comes up, it comes up, but be there for your kids. Start a conversation with them. That can truly be the reason that they open up and have these conversations with you. I'm not scared to say that I was a kid who, st who struggled with mental health. Um, it really all started in the fifth grade. I used to wear a really bright pair of pink shoes to school every Friday to to show kids that I was battling with cancer fundraising that I was supporting them even more than I could. And that was all started because my dad had a coworker who was battling breast cancer. So he'd do the same thing. Uh, and I was ridiculed for wearing pink shoes. You know, that was kind of the start of it all. Um, and then obviously when my mom took a step back from, from her, um, from my life, you know, she's unfortunately still not in it now. That, those are truly things that I've struggled with. And I tell kids that, you know, it's even as someone who is now graduated high school and is doing something like this, I still struggle with mental health. There's always people who say, bullying needs to stop forever. And that's something that I've always told kids is that it's never gonna stop. You know, there will always be somebody who does it. Um, but to be able to stand up for yourself in those situations, that's why I have the pink shoe story. Um, for me, that's something that I always share to kids and they're able to turn into something like that. Hopefully they have their own pink shoe story. I started this nonprofit going on mental health and self-esteem. The original crisis line has been a huge part of my nonprofit. Um, so when I heard that number finally switched from the whatever the nine, 10 digit long number was to, to 988, um, it was something I knew I truly wanted to tackle. 
um, obviously with it being a big part, but also showing kids that this is a safe place to reach out to. You know, it's not gonna be something where your calls are put out on the internet or anything like that. It's, it's a safe place to call into if you are truly struggling. Um, and that's something that I did, that's a message that I wanna carry on and, and let kids know that this is a tool that is there for you if you're ever in that situation.